Here is what the old version of Ideogram came up with. And this is the exact same prompt with the new version that just dropped, Ideogram 2.0. And here's another example of a very long phrase and a difficult layout where Ideogram messed up the W and generally the design doesn't look that exciting. And here is once again the same prompt, except with Ideogram version 2.0, everything is spelled correctly and the design looks a lot nicer. And another example of Ideogram 1.0, the old version, messing up the text on some of these letters. And here you can see what Ideogram version 2 did with the same prompt, it looks a lot nicer and everything is spelled correctly. This is really good news for anyone designing print on demand products with the help of Ideogram. I've been doing some initial testings with early access to the new version and they've definitely improved a lot of things when it comes to creating t-shirt graphics and in this video I'm going to walk you through what has changed with the update. I'm going to give you a quick tutorial of the new interface and show you the different features. We'll do a comparison of the new style presets as well as color schemes feature. And then at the end of the video, I'll also show you a bit of a hidden trick to find amazing prompts for t-shirts very, very easily. So let's quickly walk through the summary of what's been changed and added, and then I'll go into the tutorial and the comparisons. First of all, Ideogram 2.0 now includes five different models, general, realistic, design, anime, and 3D. These models have a strong effect on the output and will override the prompt, so be sure to explore each one. The auto mode will automatically select the most suitable model based on your prompt. The realistic model bridges the gap between imagination and reality and offers the best photorealism possible with AI. So that's probably not going to be that interesting for print and demand sellers, but some of the other models definitely are good for generating more t-shirt design specific graphics. And we're going to go into that later on in the video. You can now pick your color palette, which gives you more control over the output image. This is useful if you want to create on-brand designs or want to capture a specific vibe. This is a really cool and interesting feature, which I haven't really seen anywhere else. And you can also create your own custom color schemes with it. Text rendering is significantly improved on Ideogram 2.0 and the design model is able to create unique greeting cards, t-shirt designs, posters, illustrations with longer and more accurate text. So as you can see right there from the release notes, they are actually making their model work very well for t-shirt designs, posters, greeting cards, print on demand products. They have us as POD sellers in mind as well. Search has now been enabled for all public ideogram images. Our users have collectively generated more than 1 billion images in the past year. That's incredible. And you can get inspired by browsing through the specific images and prompts you're most interested in. Very, very cool feature. An enhanced version of Magic Prompt is live with the new model. We suggest leaving Magic Prompt on for most applications unless you have a very specific prompt. I don't really agree with that. I think in a lot of cases, you still get really good results without magic prompt if you have a good base prompt. But yeah, occasionally you might want to test that out as well. Describe continues to be one of the most powerful features. Make sure to upload images, then describe, then regenerate. Upscale is improved too and works better across different categories of images. That's definitely exciting as well because I did test their upscale feature recently and it didn't perform very well in comparison to some of the other upscaling alternatives out there. Generally, image coherence is better, so five finger hands, aligned eyes, anatomically accurate human bodies, etc. That's always great. More accuracy in the pictures will always help us out. Using the My Images tab makes it easier to see the images you've generated over time. More organization features are coming soon. So in order to use the new version of Ideogram, you need to come to the home page and click into the prompt bar. If you're still seeing these old presets down here for illustration, 3D render, typography, etc., then you still have the old version selected. In that case, you need to head over to the symbol right here next to generate, which opens up the advanced settings. And now we can change the model from 1.0 to 2.0 and as you can see we've now got this new color palette feature that gets added and the style presets have also completely changed so let me show you how i would run this sample prompt right here this is supposed to create a t-shirt design illustration of a hiker against a vintage sunset uh, with the words just one more i promise now by default we've got this style set to auto that essentially means that it's going to automatically choose one of the styles according to your prompt and in most cases if you have a keyword like t-shirt design in there or like flat illustration isolated on a white background, it is going to default to the design style. That is the most suitable for POD, at least in most cases. However, some of the other styles can also be handy, but more on that later in the comparison. Most of the times it defaults 
to design. So you can select that from the get go if you want to, if you don't want to leave it up to chance. And then in terms of the color palettes, I'm going to leave that off for now, but I'm going to show you how this feature works later on in the video. Now, one thing that I would definitely try out is the auto magic prompt feature, because then you will have some results where you just have the base prompt and other results where the magic prompt has been applied and you get some slightly different results, sometimes better than the original prompt. Sometimes the original is actually a nicer result, but you never know until you've tried. So maybe set the magic prompt setting to auto. One thing that I also tend to see you get some really good results for print and demand is when you set the aspect ratio right here to a portrait format, especially something like three by four or four by five suits the print area for t-shirt designs very, very well. And it occasionally gets better results than the default one by one square. The rendering setting down here, I would also recommend setting to quality because that is going to give Ideogram more time to generate the images, which means it's going to be more accurate, not just in terms of the graphic, but also in terms of the text and the spelling accuracy. And the graphics tend to look generally a little bit nicer. Now, the downside to this definitely is that it takes a lot longer to generate, but if you're struggling with accuracy, this is definitely a setting worth considering. The rest of this can stay the same and then I'm just going to click generate down here. So here we are, the results definitely look like t-shirt designs to me. I like the fact that I didn't use too many colors and this subtle text effect right here with the orange actually looks pretty nice as well. This end result right here has the magic prompt applied. That's why it has a somewhat different style. This is more text based with the actual graphics embedded into the text. Not a bad take, to be honest. I wouldn't have thought of that myself, but generally I have a feeling that these sorts of graphics would do best. And also notice that everything is spelled correctly. Nothing looks messy and it's all very easy to read. So here's another example. This one was in the intro. And in this case, it absolutely nailed the t-shirt design style. The vintage sunset looks really, really good. Nice color scheme. The graphic as well definitely looks like something that you would find on t-shirts. Minimal colors, has that vector style and the text at the bottom is very neat two amazing results and by the way this prompt is from my 100 print to demand prompt guide which is linked in the description and if you use the code alpapa that will give you an additional percentage off of your order now in this case we've got the design style right here selected and i also ran this prompt with the other style presets just to compare. Here is the 3D version. <laughs> I think you can probably guess that this one's going to be useless for print and demand. I mean, it does look pretty funny, <laughs> but yeah, not really for us. Then we've got the anime style. Um, I'm not sure this actually looks anime-like. It has definitely worked for me that style with some other types of graphics, but in this case, I think kind of makes it look worse. It has more of a sticker feel for sure, but I think the design style preset looked a lot better. Then we have general over here, which actually does have some decent results as well. These are a little bit more detailed than the design preset, so that's something you can bear in mind. General gives you a little bit more detail perhaps and design is more simple but these results definitely also usable for print and demand in my opinion and then we've got realistic for the last one in this case it definitely tries to get some realism into the image at least in terms of what's in the background and um, the graphics in this case actually still look somewhat like pd graphics but yeah to make your life easier just go with general or the design style those got the best results for these sort of vintage sunsets but what about a different type of graphic or prompt in this case we've got a very simple one a cute kawaii halloween themed ghost the text bra and isolated on a white background so this result looks really, really cool in my opinion. I like the color scheme and this one was created with the design style again. So yeah, all of these look pretty neat. What about the other styles though? Here we have general again, great result in my opinion and definitely usable for POD. I did like the design style a touch more, um, but this is still decent. Then we've got realistic. Again, the background um, did get a bit wonky right here with um, some real photography. It still kept the graphic in front kind of simple, but it doesn't look as good anymore if you wanted to use it on, say, a t-shirt. The 3D style, once again, whilst it looks interesting and funny, definitely not useful for POD sellers. At least I can't think of any products with this type of design might work. And here we've got anime, and you can definitely see more of an anime style right here with the eyes and the cheeks, but I think 
it also kind of ruins the printed demand feel because the text is written on the ghost right here, not underneath. But yeah, if you are after an anime styled graphic, then definitely try out that preset. It does definitely seem to make some useful changes. So let me show you how the color palette feature works as well. We've got a very simple prompt right here for a pumpkin in front of a retro sunset. And I purposely didn't specify any color scheme. So by default, this is turned off. If you want to turn it on, you just click onto these colors and then it's going to use those for a graphic. You also have this drop down with a bunch of presets. So uh, you've got this dark green one, for example, magic looks pretty good for feminine or like girly niches, perhaps something like a unicorn design. Mosaic actually looks really, really close to some color schemes that you would frequently see on vintage sunsets. So that's definitely an interesting one. And you can also add a custom color scheme down here. So if you click on this, let's say we want one that's specific for Halloween, we can actually add a few different types of oranges right here. And then let's Let's also include a purple. That's quite suitable, I think, for Halloween and some light sort of beige-ish tones as well. And there we go. Let's use this custom color scheme first. I'm going to hit generate and then just rerun this with a few other selections. Let's try pastel as well. I think mosaic. Uh, looks quite nice and then we'll go with the uh, jungle one perhaps as well to compare that so here we've got this side by side comparison as you can see the color schemes are clearly different in all of these this is the first one with a halloween setting then we've got pastel this was mosaic i believe and then the green one over here on the left obviously this one is the most suitable for Halloween, I would say. Um, there's a bit too much purple for my liking. You can also see the color scheme that was used down here. Uh, you can even copy that same color scheme or use it again in a new prompt right here if you click plus symbol. And one thing to bear in mind, I did specify that this should be isolated on a black background, but that gets overwritten by one of the colors in your color scheme. All of these do not have a black background here it shows the pink and use the rest of the colors for the actual graphics now another really cool new addition is this search function right here for the explore page so now you can simply type in something like t-shirt hit enter and you're going to get a bunch of results that have the word t-shirt included in the prompt so clearly as you can see, most of these look like t-shirt designs. Um, you can even go a step further sometimes because maybe you want to look for a specific style of t-shirt, right? Let's say we want to look at Halloween uh, themed t-shirts or prompts. As you can see, there is a bunch of random images, uh, photography style stuff that gets mixed in right here. What we can do in that case is we can filter it by design up here. So you can filter through and now we should have majority t-shirt design style results. Um, this is really, really handy and can make it a lot easier for you to find good prompts. Another thing you could try is type in isolated hit enter because most people do use something like isolated on a white background, isolated on a black background. And as you can see, that's once again a really good filter to quickly find a lot of POD prompts. And um, what you're seeing at the top are highly rated ones, but if you scroll down quite a lot, you will see some different results as well that you probably haven't seen before. Uh, so definitely a cool feature to take advantage of. And this is also a good way to learn what the different styles look like. You can filter through these right here and compare the results. Uh, and that way you can learn which one of these uh, style presets is going to be most suitable for you whilst generating your images. Let me know what you think of Ideogram 2.0 in the comments down below. And if you want to learn about a really cool underrated feature that can definitely help you out with your print on demand designs, make sure to check out this video next.